Hello and welcome, my name is William. Today we're going to take a look at some source code for identifying isomorphic trees, which will also include the source code for rooting a tree and finding the center of a tree. In the previous video, we talked about identifying isomorphic trees by first serializing the tree into a string and then using that as a means for equality. Today we will be looking at the same approach in detail, so make sure you give the previous video a watch if you haven't done so. There should be a link in the description below. All the source code you see today can be found on GitHub at github.com slash williamfizet slash algorithms. Awesome, here we are in the source code for identifying isomorphic trees written in Java. Let's start by taking a look at an example of what this code does. So let's scroll down to the main method all the way down here. You'll see that in this method, we create two trees, tree1 and tree2, which are structurally the same but have different labels. Today, we're going to take a look at is the implementation behind the trees are isomorphic method, which is able to check whether tree1 and tree2 are truly isomorphic or if they are actually two fundamentally different trees. Okay, going back up to the trees are isomorphic method, which is right here, you'll see that it takes as input two undirected trees stored as adjacency lists, tree one and tree two. And just so that we don't have to worry about it, the first thing I do is check if either of the trees are empty and throw an exception. After that, we begin the whole tree serialization process. It's pretty simple. Start by finding the center or centers of both trees, then encode the first tree into a string. The encode method takes as input a rooted tree instead of an undirected tree, so make sure you root the tree first. After the encode method has finished processing, it will return a unique string for tree one. Now, the next thing we want to do is encode the second tree so that we can compare it to the first one. However, if the second tree has two centers, we don't know which center in the second tree is the correct one, so we need to try both. For this, iterate over both centers and root the tree comparing the encoded result with the first tree. If there's a match, then we know that the trees are isomorphic. Awesome. So that's the algorithm from a bird's eye view. Now let's dig into the details and figure out what exactly is going on inside the find tree centers, root tree, and encode methods. Let's begin with the find tree centers method. To refresh your memory, the approach we're taking to find the center or centers of a tree is to iteratively remove leaf nodes layer by layer. This is analogous to peeling the layers of an onion. When we're finished removing all the layers, what's left is the middle. The integer n represents the number of nodes in our tree. After this, I define two variables. The first one is degree with size n, which will capture the degree of each node, followed by leaves, which is a dynamic array that will contain the most recent layer of leaf nodes. Then, for the first bit of logic, simply loop through all the nodes and compute the degree of each one. I do this by inspecting the adjacency list and counting the number of edges coming out of each node. Then, if the node has a degree less than or equal to 1, meaning we're either dealing with a single node tree or a leaf node, then add the node to the leaves array. After this, set the degree of the leaf node to be 0, as though we removed it from the tree. The way we're going to know when we've found the center or centers is when we have processed all the nodes in the tree. The variable processed leaves is going to keep track of how many nodes we've processed so far. Every iteration, we're going to increment processed leaves by the number of leaves we found in the last layer. Entering the loop, new leaves is a new array that will contain the new leaf nodes on the next layer. I'm using a new array to avoid interfering with the leaf nodes on the current layer. All right, so for every leaf node in the current layer, process all the neighbors of those nodes and decrement the degree of the neighbor nodes. Since we're removing the current node, this means that the degree of the neighboring nodes needs to go down by one. 
if the neighbor node after being decremented has a degree of one, then we know it will be in the next layer of leaf nodes. So add it to the new leaves array. Every time we finish processing a former leaf node, give it a degree of zero to mark it as removed. When we finish processing the current layer, increment the process leaves variable and replace the leaves array with the newly found leaves. And finally, return the centers, which are stored in the leaves array. So that's how the find tree centers method works. Now, before we take a look at how to root a tree, we should take a look at the tree node class, which gets used by the tree node method. So here we are at the tree node class. Tree nodes are relatively straightforward. They only contain three members, a unique ID, a parent node reference, and a list of references to all its children. To create a tree node, all you need to do is give that tree node a unique ID. You can also optionally create a tree node with an ID and a specific parent node. This is often very handy. One useful method I've added to this class is the ability to add children to this tree node. Simply pass in any number of tree nodes you wish to add as child nodes to this node, and they'll be added to the children's list. The rest of the methods in this class are simply getter methods. All right, now let's scroll down to the root tree method, which is right here. You will see that this function takes as input our tree represented as an adjacency list and the ID of the root node we want to root the tree by. A lot of the time the root node ID is going to be zero, but it's nice to be able to choose which node we want to root the tree by because in situations like this tree isomorphism problem, that's really handy. The first line in the root tree method creates a root tree node. Then I call the build method to start the depth first search traversal to root the tree. As input parameters, I just pass in the graph and the root node as the current node. Inside the build tree method, we enter a for loop that loops over all the neighbors of the current node. All the neighbor nodes are going to become children of the current node, except for the last parent node. One thing we need to be aware of is that the edges are undirected in the original tree, meaning we absolutely need to avoid a situation where we add a directed edge pointing back to the current node's parent. Every other neighbor node will become a child of the current node. To check that the neighbor node is the parent node, first check that the parent is not null so that we don't get a null pointer exception then access the parent's ID and check if the child ID is equal to the parent ID and skip this node if true. Otherwise, we're dealing with a proper child node, so create a new tree node and add the child tree node to the list of the current node's children. Afterwards, dig deeper into the tree and do the same thing, but for the newly created child node. Once we finish iterating over all the neighbors of this node, return the current node. Awesome, moving on to the encode method right here. Remember that after we finished rooting our tree, the next thing we want to do is encode it into a unique string so that we can easily compare two trees to see if they're isomorphic. The first thing we do is handle the base case where we have a null node. For this, we can return an empty string, which will cause all leaf nodes to have a left and right bracket pairing as a starting value on the callback. For each node, we maintain a list of labels for all the subtrees. To generate the labels, iterate through all the children of this node and recursively call the encode method, adding results to the labels list. After the loop, the recursive calls have returned and the labels list is populated and ready to be sorted. Afterwards, concatenate the labels and return the result wrapped in brackets. Awesome, and that's a wrap for this video. I hope you had a large enough dose of tree algorithms for the day. Please like this video if you learned something and subscribe for more mathematics and computer science videos. Thank you.